A viable alien spaceship detector is here and nearby habitable and water-covered plants have been found. For thousands of years people have wondered, are we alone? The astronomers have now ascertained, statistically speaking, that every star in our Milky Way galaxy should have at least one planet and that small rocky planets are extremely common. Our own galaxy has 100 billion stars and our universe has upward of 100 billion galaxies, making the chance for life elsewhere seem inevitable based on sheer probability. And we could say with certainty that for the first time in human history, we are finally on the verge of being able to search for signs of life beyond our solar system around the nearest hundreds of stars. And it's a great time to be a space scientist as the latest space telescopes are allowing them to identify more Earth-like planets and planets able to potentially host life. These telescopes also help identify technological signatures that may indicate alien life using machines. All three of those events were discovered recently, making this a huge week for space science. First, two exoplanets with Earth-like masses were discovered orbiting a dwarf star in its habitable Goldilocks zone very close to our solar system. And next, two large ocean worlds composed largely of water, something rarely seen, were identified. Finally, scientists found a way to use one of the world's largest lasers to detect alien warp drive powering uh, alien spaceships. Nature seems to bend on, it seems bent on showing us that Earth-like planets are very common. And with these two, we know now seven in planetary systems uh, quite near to the sun. In a press release announced in the new study published in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, lead author Alejandro Suarez Mascareno of the Institute de Astrofisica de Canaria in Spain's Canary Islands delivers the exciting news that Fermi's paradox is becoming more paradoxical. Fermi's paradox asks, where is everybody? Meaning, where are all the extraterrestrials? He and other researchers at AIC recently discovered exoplanets GJ1002b and GJ1002c orbiting the red dwarf star GJ1002, which is less than 16 light years from our solar system. Incredibly, both planets have masses similar to our Earth and are both in the habitable zone of GJ102, which means they could potentially host life similar to that on Earth. Mascareno's astonishment that he and his team had just upped the known list of Earth-like exoplanets to five, from five to seven means Fermi was right when asking, where are their inhabitants? GJ102 is a red dwarf star that with barely one-eighth the mass of the sun. It's quite a cool, faint star. This means that its habitability zone is very close to the star. Co-author Vera Maria Passeguer explains that GJ1002b orbits the star in only 10 days, while a year of GJ1002c is just over 21 days. Despite that, they were able to be detected by astronomers using the European Southern Observatory, ESO, instrument ESPRESSO, uh, a shell, a spectrogram for rocky exoplanets and stable spectroscopic observations, ESPRESSO for short, installed at the Very Large Telescope, VLT, in the Atacama Desert of northern Chile, and the CARMENES, the Calar Alto High Resolution Search for M dwarfs with exoearths and near infrared and optical shell spectrographs at the Calar Alto Observatory in Andalusia, southern Spain. These instruments, instruments collected data on GJ102 between 2017 and 2021. Carmenes was especially well suited for scanning a dim star for exoplanets because it is sensitive over a wide range of near infrared wavelengths something no other Earth-based telescope has. However, it still needed Espresso to confirm the two planets, and now that they know where these planets are, Mascareno and other astronomers plan to the uh, Andes spectrogram, spectrograph 
on the extremely large telescope currently under construction on top of Cerro Amazonas in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile to study the atmosphere of GJ 1002C. Take that, Fermi. The team, led by uh, led uh, by the researchers of the University of Montreal, Canada, has found evidence that two exoplanets orbiting a red dwarf star are water worlds where water mark makes up a large fraction of the entire planet. These worlds, located in a planetary system 218 light years away in the constellation Lyra, are unlike any planets found in our solar system. NASA announced that researchers in the University of Montreal published a report in the journal Nature Astronomy discussing their discovery of the two water-covered exoplanets orbiting Kepler-138. Uh, the name means it was discovered using data collected by NASA's now deactivated Kepler Space Telescope. The two watery exoplanets, Kepler-138c and Kepler-138d, were discovered using NASA's Hubble and the retired Spitzer Space Telescopes and were two of four planets orbiting Kepler-138. The methodology used to determine they were water planets involved comparing their size and mass to known planets, which revealed that their low mass and bigger than Earth size means at least half of their volume was comprised of materials that are lighter than rock, but heavier than the hydrogen or helium, which are the mass of gas giant planets like Jupiter. That left them to conclude that Kepler-138c and Kepler-138d are covered in water like Earth, and unlike all of the other planets in our solar system, and most of the exoplanets discovered so far. It's the best evidence yet for water worlds, a type of planet that was theorized by astronomers to exist for a long time. Study co-author Bjorn Benecki, a professor of astrophysics in the University of Montreal, expressed the excitement of the team in making this discovery. However, Caroline Plolet from the Institute for research on exoplanets, IREX, at the University of Montreal, and leader of the study, cautioned that the liquid on these planets is not necessarily water, and even if it is, it's not necessarily safe for humans or other life forms. The temperature of Kepler-138d's atmosphere is likely above the boiling point of water, and we expect a thick, dense atmosphere made of steam on this planet. Only under that steam atmosphere, there could potentially be liquid water at high pressure or even water in other phases that occurs at high pressures called the supercritical fluid. That eliminates both planets since the researchers discovered that their, to their surprise that Kepler-138c and Kepler-138d are twins when it comes to mass and size. That doesn't take anything away from their importance as the newest members of the small club of water world planets. That covers the new exoplanet discoveries. Another announcement this week has to do with the spaceships intelligent life forms might use for travel between their planets and others in the galaxy in a deeply scientific and formula-filled study published in the preprint database ARXIV. Researchers led by physicist Luke Sellers of the University of California, Los Angeles, proposed that Intelligent extraterrestrials would travel in rapid and or massive accelerating spacecraft, which they call Ramacraft, potentially powered by warp drives. And while any object with mass that accelerates generates gravitational waves, a huge galaxy galloping Ramacraft could likely produce sizable and detectable gravitational waves. If these Ramacrafts were traveling at about one tenth of the speed of light, the researchers determined there could, they could be detected using the U.S.-based Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO for short, the current king of gravitational wave detectors. In the future, the planned Desi Hertz Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory and Bing Bang Observer will be 100 times more sensitive than LIGO and able to spot more ramacrafts inside the Milky Way. Of course, as Fermi might say, possible does not necessarily mean real. We have not detected alien life on exoplanets in habitable zones or on water worlds or in alien spaceships yet, but our technology is advancing at speeds 
that could find them soon, if they exist for that moment of doubt, we can thank the late Frank Drake and his equation. Space science needs more optimists. And this is on Collective Spark by Paul Sieber, Mysterious Universe. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.